Welcome back. This is question number seven from the specimen paper of the IGCSE 2020 um, paper four. Okay, this is the specimen paper for the new syllabus. Um, here's a question on functions, question number seven. And we're asked here to solve the equation f of x equals g1. Now what that means is we have to take the function f of x and we have to equate it to the function g when 1 has been put in place of the x. So whatever's in this bracket takes the place of the x in that function. So we take f of x and we write it as what is equal to, which is 2x plus 1. And we equate it to the function g with 1 substituted instead of the x. So that's going to be 1 squared, 1 squared plus 4. So you end up with having an equation 2x plus 1 is equal to, that's going to give you 5, 1 squared is 1, plus 4 is 5. So then you subtract 1 from both sides, so 2x is equal to 5 minus 1, which is 4. Therefore, x is equal to 4 divided by 2, which is 2. So we write the answer in the space provided. Okay, that's part A. Then part B says, find the inverse function for the function f. That means inverse function. When it has f to the power of minus 1x, it means the inverse function. Now, when you're finding the inverse function, what you're basically doing is you are um, doing the reverse operations that were done to the x and in the reverse order. Okay, so the typical way of doing it by using uh, algebra would be to say, let's call, first of all, let's call f of x y, because like it's y equals f of x. Like that's how you normally write it. So we're going to write instead of f of x, y. So we have y equals 2x plus 1. Now, when we're finding the inverse of a function, uh, what we actually are doing, the inverse is when you are basically reflecting it in the, in the line y equals x. You're basically changing the x for the y and the y for the x. The x-axis becomes the y-axis and the y-axis becomes the x-axis, basically. So you can change the x for a y and the y for an x. So instead of y, you write x. Instead of x, you write y. I haven't rearranged the formula. I've just replaced the y with x and the x with y. And then, when I make y the subject of the formula, it's going to then become the, what, what, I'll, what I'll be left with is the inverse. So if I make here this y the subject of the formula, I've got to take away 1 from both sides, and I'm left with x minus 1 equals 2y, and then divide both sides by 2, x minus 1 over 2 is equal to y. So that's the inverse function. F, uh, you, you don't write y, you write inverse of the function x, f, sorry, inverse of function f is equal to x, minus 1 divided by 2. Okay, another way you could have done this by flowcharts, which is not normally used by people, but it's a way, it's a nice way for you to understand, so I'll show you how to do it so you get a better understanding, is you think about what happened in the original function. The original function was f of x equals 2x plus 1. So you started off with x, and if you think about the operations that had to take place to the x for us to end up um, with the, the, the expression 2x plus 1, well, the first thing is that that's happened, it's been multiplied by 2, which gave us 2x. And then after that, what's happened is 1 has been added to it. So you ended up with what we got, 2x plus 1. And that is the original function. So when you're doing the inverse, you're basically starting from the other end. So you're going to call, you're going to have x over here, you're starting from this way. And you're going in the opposite direction, and you're doing the opposite operations, the inverse operations. Now the inverse of Addition is subtraction, so that would be x minus 1. And the opposite or the inverse of multiplication is division. So you're going to have to, instead of multiplying by 2, you're going to divide by 2. So you end up with x minus, whoops, x minus 1 over 2. x minus 1 over 2. And there we have our inverse function. It's the same as that we got from this way. Most people, they use this algebraic method. But this is a, a nice way of picturing what's going on. It doesn't really, uh, sometimes it gets complicated when you've got more complicated expressions, but it, it does help you to um, understand what's going on. Now, part C says, find g of fx in its simplest form. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take these functions so that I don't have to keep going up and down, up and down. Uh, I can take these, I'll take a picture of those, um, a little snapshot, and I'll paste it down here. Quickly, it's a bit big, but make it smaller. There we are. Okay, I'll just put it up there for now. 
Okay, so it says find g of fx in its simplest form. Now what this means is you have to substitute what comes second into what comes first. So it basically means substitute the function fx into the function g. So f of x is equal to 2x plus 1. So basically what it's telling you to do is substitute 2x plus 1 in place of the x in the function g. So basically this x is replaced by 2x plus 1. Okay, so whenever you have a bracket like this, you substitute just like we substituted in the, in the one above, we had g1. So we replace the x with 1. It doesn't matter what it is in the bracket, whatever it is has to replace the x in that function. So it could be anything inside here. For example, it could say gy, and I'd put y instead of the x. It could say g minus 7. I could put minus 7 instead of the x. You could say g3x plus 2. I'll put 3x plus 2 instead of this x. Okay, so whatever it is, you replace the x with that particular thing. Okay, one of the students didn't understand until I drew, well, I'm not very good at drawing, I used a clip art of a sheep. And I said, substitute whatever goes in the bracket, is the, the x is replaced by it. So this is going to be sheep squared plus 4. And then for some reason, that student, he understood. Anyway. Okay, so now you're going to replace the x with 2x plus 1. So instead of the x, you write 2x plus 1 squared plus 4. So instead of x squared plus 4, it's whatever's in the bracket squared plus 4. Now, it says in its simplest form, that means I have to expand the bracket. Um, and then I have to simplify. So I'm going to expand the bracket by squaring the bracket. Now, remember, squaring the bracket don't make the common mistake of writing 4x squared plus 1. You don't just square each term. This is actually, in its origin, it's actually 2x plus 1 times itself. And you're going to have a middle term. You have 2x times 2x plus 2x times 1 plus 1 times 2x plus 1 times 1. So you're going to have a middle x term, which you cannot ignore. All right? So be very careful about that. Once you've got confident, you would be able to use a pattern of squaring brackets, which is quite easy, where you square the first term, which is, don't forget to square the 2 as well. So it's 2x times itself, which gives you 4x squared. And then you do... 2 times 2x times 1, because when you expand a bracket which is identical like this, you're going to have 2x times 1 plus 1 times 2x, so it's two of those. So you're going to have 2 times 2x times 1, which is going to give you 4x, or plus 4x. And then you're going to have 1 squared, which is 1, okay, which represents the 1 times 1 at the end. And then you've got this plus 4 at the end. So in simplest form, this is going to be 4x squared plus 4x plus 5. Okay, there's part C done inverse functions. Now part D it says solve the equation the inverse of hx equals 0 0.5. So let me just bring this down so I'll keep bringing this down where I need it. Okay so it says solve the equation the inverse of hx equals 0 0.5. Okay now you have uh, 2 to the power of a, h of a, 2 to the power of x or h to the power of x sorry is equal to 2 to the power of x. Now, we have to find the inverse function. Now, the problem here is that you don't know how to find the inverse of this function. In IGCSE work, you won't know how to do this unless you've learned about logarithms, which is not in the syllabus. So they don't expect you to use logarithms to solve a question like this to find the inverse function. Okay, so we know h of x equals 2 to the power of x. So we've got to find when does the inverse of h of x equal 0 0.5. Okay, now, if the question said find h of x equals 0 0.5, you would say, oh, that's when 2 to the power of x equals 0 0.5. You would make the function equal to 0 0.5. But it doesn't say that. Okay, basically, we have y equals h to the power h h x h of x y equals h of x so h of x equals 0 0.5 y equals h of x okay now um so what you have to understand here is that you've got y equals 2 to the power of x that's what that means okay we just call h of x y well i mentioned it in the beginning about inverse functions when we did part b i think I mentioned that when we're finding the inverse function, the x and y, they swap around, okay? So if I was going to solve this question as h of x equals 0 
Okay, if it was h of x equals 0 0.5, if that was a question, okay, then I would have replaced the y, as I did here, with 0 0.5. Okay, I replaced the y with 0 0.5. Okay, and then I would have solved the question. That's what the question would have been if it was h of x. Imagine the question didn't say the inverse of h of x. We said this, this is exactly what I would have done. I would have said 2 to the power of x is equal to 0 0.5 because I have to make this 2 to the power of x equals 0 0.5. Then I would have solved it. It would be 2 to the power of x equals a half. So then 2 to the power of x equals 2 to the power of minus 1. x would be minus 1. But that's not the question. That's not the question. So you've got to think very carefully about this when you're not able to find the inverse function, how to do it. So as I mentioned, y is equal to 2 to the power of x in the inverse function, the x and y, they change around, okay? So instead of putting the 0 0.5 in place of the y, I'm going to put the 0 0.5 in place of the x, okay? So all you can think about it, I'm going to swap these around. This will be x equals 2 to the power of y. And now I can put this where it says y because I've swapped them around. So I can say x is equal to 2 to the power of 0 0.5 which is the square root of 2, 2 to the power of a half. The square root of 2, which you can leave like that if you want. I think that will be perfectly fine here. Or, as it does mention, write non-exact answers to three significant figures. It will be perfectly fine if you write the square root of 2 equals um, 1.41 as your answer. 1, whoops, 1.41. So if you write 1.41, both of those are correct. They're both correct. Uh, you can write either of them. It's fine. Okay, so I hope you understood that. That's a very important point here. That the inverse means you swapping the x and the y around. Okay, just like I did over here when I found the inverse function. What did I do? I swapped the x and the y. So I'm going to do the same thing here. Okay, when I'm dealing with this. Because I can't find the inverse function for this. So the only way to do it for me to deal with this question is to swap the function around. So if h of x, uh, if h of x equals 2 to the power of x for the inverse, you swap the x and the y around, and then instead of putting the 0.5 over here, you put it over there where it's been swapped to, and that gives you x equals 2 to the power of a half, which is the square root of 2. Okay, so there's the answer to part D. I hope that was clear. That's a very that's a, like a bit of a tricky one. It's only worth one mark, but it's something which uh, it does. They, as I say, sort the cats from amongst the pigeons. Now, e equals 1 over h to the power of x e equals 2 to the power of kx. Write down the value of k. Now, 1 over h to the power of x is not the same as the inverse of h to the power of x. Okay? h to the power of minus x is not the same as h to the power of x to the, or to the power of 1. They're not the same thing. This is the reciprocal, not the inverse. There's a difference between them. Okay, it's the reciprocal, but not the inverse. Okay, the inverse is where you swap the x and y around. The reciprocal is where you just basically swap the denominator and the numerator. So if h to the power of x, as we learn, is 2 to the power of x, then we got 1 over 2 to the power of x equals 2 to the power of kx. Now, how do you write 1 over 2 to the power of x as it's Reciprocal, we want the 2 to the power of x to be on top. This becomes 2 to the power of negative x equals 2 to the power of kx. So we can see that minus x is the same as kx. That means k must be equal to negative 1. Okay, so this is using the rule that 1 over a to the power of m is the same as a to the power of negative m. That's an important rule that we just used there. So don't be confused between this and this. This is the inverse. And this is the reciprocal. So this does not mean the inverse. So don't make that mistake. Okay. Um, and let's see. Is there another part of this question? No. I'm going to go to that question eight later. Okay. So there we have the answers for question number seven. Part um, D and D get basically is one where a lot of students would not know what to do. And some of them would have learned logarithms and they would have used logarithms. But it's just worth one mark. You just very simply instead of putting this if it was h of x equals um, 0 0.5 you put the 0 0.5 instead of the y here but because it's the inverse you do the reverse you put it instead of 
where the x was and the x becomes a y and the y becomes an x and you just replace the y with 0.5 after you've swapped them around and that's probably the easiest way of thinking about it and the other thing to be careful do not mix up the inverse and the reciprocal this is the inverse and this is the reciprocal which is like one over the function okay so don't mix them up they're not the same okay all right so um that's question number seven done and the other questions on this paper will be found on the playlist which is going to show up in this place here and the other questions from the topic of functions in IGCSE will show up in this place over here and if you'd like to subscribe to the channel you'll find the the icon around this area here thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video